energy. It powers our civilization. It enables our civilization. The ability to scare away the darkness, to warm our homes, transportation to and from work, getting the goods and services we need from place to place. Where does it come from? How do we capture it? And how do we utilize it? Everything about the energy we get, what we have, and what we use starts with the sun, either through fossil fuels, hundreds of millions of years in the making, or directly collected today by our plant life and solar panels. As humans, we have used the solar power of today, harnessed the solar energy of yesterday, and we're planning to transform where we get that energy tomorrow. Energy is a singular measurement of a civilization, no matter where it comes from. You could say that energy is what enables and empowers our civilization, and without it, we would not have that civilization. The market for energy has been a driving force for our economy for hundreds of years. And since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the sector has been focused on fossil fuels. Coal, oil, natural gas, and all of their derivatives. The industry that has enabled us to turn on the lights, drive to and from work or wherever we want to go, is also the sector that is creating the greatest challenges we are facing in our environment. I believe the investment market understands that, and the declines that we have seen in the value of many of these stocks seems to indicate that understanding may already be priced in. But the market leaders and the organizations that define the sector are a few years behind the times. The energy sector is losing its steam and new energy is finding other places within the existing sector and industry categories. Let's see how the components of XLE compare. Let's add Chevron. And ExxonMobil. How about Phillips 66? How about Kinder Morgan? EOG Resources. Conoco Phillips. Schlumberger. Marathon Petroleum. Valero Energy. And Williams Companies. These are the top ten. So the question is, do any of them beat the market overall. Let's add SPY. Over the last 10 years, only one of these top 10 components has beaten SPY, and that's Valero. And how much of the fund is Valero? 3.7%. If you are looking for investments in the energy sector that are focused on the alternatives to these fossil fuel companies, there are quite a few of them. It's a very popular sector. If you look at the energy sector, it's almost all coal, oil, gas, and other fossil fuel companies. Renewable energy companies are out there, but you'll find them in information technology, utilities, or elsewhere because they are component parts of larger industrial conglomerates. Well, there's my shadow. I'm at a rest stop on I-90, looking at Mount Rainier, way off in the distance. I'm looking at all of the windmills. All of the windmills. Yeah, this is gorgeous. 
I'm on my way to Sandpoint, Idaho for the launch party or the celebration of the first installation of solar roadways on a sidewalk in a park in downtown Sandpoint. I stopped here and I thought I'd get a picture of all these beautiful windmills. Renewable energy. Love it. Fortunately, because the sector has been drawing so much attention, fund managers have taken notice and have launched a number of opportunities for people to put their money into clean and renewable energy, letting them do all the research work. This is a list of those funds, which you can find at ETF.com. The expense ratios for these funds are relatively low, and the returns have been spectacular over the last few years. This is new enough that many of these funds don't have a long history. But just since January 2019, a portfolio balanced among these 10 ETFs would have given you a compounded annual growth rate of 48.94%. That's not bad. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the energy sector. I'm still getting used to this new video generating software at Film Express. I know it's been a few weeks since I produced a video, and I'm hoping to get more of my individual stock reviews out soon. I've been having a lot of fun going live with Torsten from Octenfinder.net in Germany on our new series entitled Dividend Growth International. The old saying holds true, go big or go home. I also want to thank Jason at JMac Investing for the shout out in one of his last videos about Zoetis and Intuit. Great choices, Dick Jason. Deuces. I'm not a financial advisor, and I don't play one on YouTube. I'm just having fun making videos about the things I enjoy, and the stock market is one of those things. If you enjoyed, please click the like button, subscribe, and share this video with friends. The Grassroots Stock Market Investigation Community is growing daily, and we welcome all voices, faces, and perspectives. Let's use 2020 as the beginning of a wise money revolution in the stock market, remembering that first rule of investing, don't lose money. See you in the comments.